We've mentioned the word biomarkers a few times here. Are there any biomarkers available that will predict either response or toxicity of this agent? Unfortunately, none that you can use in the clinical practice today. There are some correlative studies performed in the context of the trial that led to the approval. Not surprisingly, that PI3 kinase activation measured by gene uh, signature, uh, it correlated with the response. So that's not surprising. But we don't have bio selection biomarkers that you can do up front and say, I'm going to give you now copanlisib because your chances you'll respond 100% or no, copanlisib is not going to work for you. I'd rather give you something else. We're not there yet. How far away are we? Uh, I, I think the company did really extensive biomarker studies, again, in the, in the context of the trial. Um, and uh, it's, they could, I think, as I recall, they could not find any a clear-cut biomarker that can be translated into, let's say, companion diagnostic or to select patients. So at least in the context of copanlisib, you know, the good news is it has a good response rate. You, it's not a 10% you have to select them. It's about 60% about response rate. But I'm not so sure this will be the next step in the <coughs> development of this agent. Well, that's a good segue. I think the next step into developing these agents are phase three clinical trials, and there are a number of them going on with this drug. Um, Chronos two, three, and four. Catch him. Um, could you review those for us? The Chronos two study is copanalizib uh, versus placebo in relapsed low-grade lymphomas. The Chronos three study, getting a little more advanced is copanalizib uh, plus rituximab, and the Chronos 4 study is copanalizib uh, with RCHOP versus RCHOP alone, and these are all going to be in, in low-grade lymphomas. And are there any other studies that you could think of doing that might further inform us about the role of this drug in the context of how we currently treat our patients? I have one thought, and that is <clears throat> we're missing the most commonly used chemotherapy drug here, and that's bendamustine. Mm -hmm. Is there a trial that you might design that might answer that question about its contribution? So one of the coroners actually included either or Archop or Arbenda, and then for practical reasons, I think because, and then, then it switched to uh, Archop because there are very few patients. But I agree with you, it would be good to test it in the context of commonly used <coughs> regimens like Arbendamustine. Now, all these studies are on relapsed refractory patients. One thing we learned from the IDEL experience was that toxicities were much worse, probably because more intact immune system. Do we have any data that this drug might be safe in the frontline setting? None that I'm aware of. I don't know of any frontline studies using this drug. And one of the issues with um, follicular lymphoma, as we pointed out earlier in our discussion, is that uh, you know many patients can have very heterogeneous outcomes. In fact, some patients uh, with standard chemoimmunotherapy will probably never relapse, at least not not in the not in long, 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 long time. Not in our lifetime, right? right. 